Um, unfortunately, this has become kind of a, a normal situation here in the last few years at the SEC tournament as the Cats take an early loss. I'm sitting here with Ryan. I'll do a little bit of an intro, and then I'll let him uh, talk. So, I, you know, I try to be nuanced in the way I look at this stuff, and I feel that way about this. There's the, There's the – sort of bigger picture how Kentucky has played in this particular event and then there's the other picture of okay well what about the rest I mean there's still another the NCAA tournament is still to come and there's still one to six games left uh, in the season but let's start with tonight and the loss in the SEC tournament I hate this for the people down here I, I hate how things have gone in this tournament I mean this was a tournament that Kentucky has owned really since it restarted for many, many years. I mean, they won during Cal Perry's first uh, however many years. I think I saw he was 23-3 and three in the SEC tournament in his first uh, nine or nine years or whatever. And in the last four years, we've won one game. We have the 13th out of 14 teams in the SEC. We're 13th out of 14 in record in the SEC tournament in the oh, last four years. No. Uh, 13th out of 14. <laughs> that's awful. I mean, that's awful. That's absolutely awful. And when you consider what this tournament is for UK fans, it's even worse. And I'm not going to wax poetic about it, but I've been coming to this tournament in some form since, like, 1990, maybe 1989. I think we went for, like, a game in 1989, but in 1990. And, you know, it's one of my favorite weekends of the year, has been my entire life, from when I went with my grandfather to now when all my friends are here. But that's not just true for me. I mean, that's true for thousands of people. Oh, yeah. This, to me, is the best crowd you get at Kentucky games. The Nashville SEC tournament crowd is the best of the Kentucky fan base. No offense to Rupp Arena, folks, because that can be great, too. But this is – there's a little bit of everybody here. You know, in the recent years, as Nashville's grown more expensive, it's, it's, you know, harder. But there are people who come to these games who don't get to go to any other games. Right. And the atmosphere is electric. During that run in the first half, I thought to myself, this is as loud as I can remember this, this place being. Yep. I mean, it was electric as Kentucky was making their run uh, in the first half. And so I hate for these people that this is now four years in a row where we've gone home very early. Only one semifinal in the last four years, only one victory in the last four years. So I hate it. I mean, this place was – Rolling, I would say. I mean, that gym holds what eighteen thousand. I'd say sixteen thousand of them were Kentucky fans. I don't know who's left in that arena now, but it can't be many people. Clear it out. Um, so that stinks. Kentucky was manhandled today. I mean, I, you know, when I think about the game, I'm kind of. It's odd we only lost by ten. It feels like all I remember is them making shots. Yeah. You know, uh, they in the first half hit a ton of threes. In the second half, you know, they just got to the rim whenever they wanted. Whenever they wanted. Our guards just couldn't – they couldn't guard them. I mean, that's the bottom line. We just can't we, – we could not stop the ball. And everything on defense starts with stopping the ball, and we can't st- – we, we could not stop the ball. And this is how it was every game earlier this year, if you remember. And then things have been better in the last few weeks, but not tonight. I mean, we gave up 95, I think, down there at A&M and 97 tonight against a team that's not that great offensively. It's only, it's only two times they scored in the 90s all year. Is that right? Yep. I mean, they, they're they 360th in the country in three-point percentage. <laughs> and they hit 11. They hit 12. Hit 12? Hit 12. They're 360th in the country in three-point percentage. Now, it's not hard to do when, you, when you're when you wide open. <laughs> <laughs> they were some wide open looks. Um, so, it stinks. I mean, I, you know, there are little things you could point out, but three things stood out to me just in terms of the actual game. One, I – it's probably too late, and it is what it is. I, do, I, I play your best play. Start your best players. Yeah, start your best players. Down eight to one. Eight to one. Start. Never came back. That's never came back. That race to ten on DraftKings has always been take the other team. Ne- never came back. Why? Why do we do that? Why do we put a lineup? This is my my question for people who defend that lineup. Why do we put a lineup on the floor? that we don't play at any other point the rest of the game. True. 
That's we the don't, time they play. We never play that lineup the rest of the game, ever. Nope. We play the players, but we never play them together right. for the rest of the game. So why do we do it there? Why do you start a lineup that clearly is not good enough that you never go back to it? That's just There's not a logical there's answer. There's no logical answer. We're going to look back and we're going to have two guys go in the top five to seven of the draft and neither one of them starts. And I don't. There's, I, I don't understand it. I don't understand it. If that lineup was even close to good, you would play it later in the game. But we never do. Never. Because it's not a good lineup to play because we can't score. And as far as de- you would say, well, you could put it in for defense. Well, that it didn't stop anybody either. No. Right? And at this point, like, waiting two and a half minutes and then putting Reed or Rob in, why are you even – like, why? Nobody's tired yet. Like, what's the – it's just – it doesn't make sense. So that's number one. Number two – we just aren't good with physicality. We just aren't. I mean, when teams are physical with us, we are not good. Um, the officiating, I, I do think Kentucky was on the losing end of the officiating. But with that said, it was officiated as a game where they were going to let them play for most of it. Now, it got a little tighter down the stretch. But for most of it, they let them play. And we just aren't good at that. And there's going to be a game in the NCAA tournament where the referees do that. Absolutely. And we're, and we're just not good at that. Um, and our guys shy away from it. And then I think third, a lot of the things that we are good at and have been great at this year, they kind of got away from. They didn't share the ball. There was a lot of kind of – running up and throwing stuff up on the glass, especially, unfortunately, by Rob, who I can't I can't crush Rob for it because that gets to me. I was surprised at how much our players didn't seem to want to shoot in the second half. I really thought only Rob and Antonio, and Antonio was in foul trouble the whole game, only Rob and Antonio seemed to want the ball. Now, I think that led Rob to take some bad shots, but Reed only shot twice, and he passed up a lot of open looks. Yeah, he didn't score the second half. But and why I, did I, he I only pass remember up. one shot. Did he shoot twice? I think he shot twice, and he passed up a lot of open yeah, looks, and it was clear to me some of the other guys didn't want to shoot at all. Yeah. When they got the ball, it was when can I get rid of it. That's one of the reasons I really like a do is he's not scared. No. And Rob's not scared. No. So, and, and I don't think Antonio's scared. But some of the guys seem scared to me yeah. tonight, and they haven't been like that all year. And it made me wonder. I just watched it and thought, this team looks tight. They look tight. They look – this team that has been so much fun because they run up and down the court and they feel like this energy and it's what's made the fan base love them and they're excited and they're happy. For the first time this year, it looked to me like they were scared to lose. They looked tense, and a And M, the one that looked loose, they look loose, and they were the ones who were fighting for the tournament lives. For the tournament, and they looked tense. And again, Cal looked tense. Yeah, he did. He was Cal was tense. Screaming I, I, a lot. Sat, I sat right directly across from Cal. I was on the front row on the other side. That was he's not been like that this year. No, he's been a lot more calm this year. And tonight he was screaming, yep. and it was like, is he tense? It felt like the way all the games felt like a couple years ago, where it was like, (laughs) it kind of felt like that tonight. And look, is this loss the end of the world? No. I still think this team, and there will be people who disagree with me on this, I still think they could go on a run. There aren't a lot of teams, so if you want to be positive, there's not a lot of teams like A&M. There's not a lot of teams that physical. There's not a lot of teams that have a guy as good as Wade Taylor. They're a bad matchup for us. So we might not even see a team like that in the tournament. So I still – I'm not giving up. But I don't like how tense they looked because they haven't been like that all year. Even in the bad times, I didn't think they looked tense. No. And they looked tense. And Cal looked tense. And there was a lot of yelling. And it was not like it's been. And so, you know, we've talked all year. Cal kind of said, built for March. Built for March. Well, that's – it's March. That puts a lot on March. Yep. Right? You know, when you, that puts a lot on March, and I thought they looked like they had a lot on March. So, now we'll see what happens. I'm bummed for the fans here. This is a – it's sad. <laughs> like, walking around, people are just sad. And people – I was surprised how angry people were in the crowd. 
You oh, sat yeah. there right next to me. You heard you heard oh, people. Oh, yes. I was surprised. I mean, I haven't gone to a lot of games this year. I've been to two games that were up and then that game in Philly. So, I hadn't been in like, you know, it's just a lot. There's a lot on this team right now and a lot of pressure going to be in these next three weeks. I do want to commend Cal. I thought what his comments in the post game were good because he expressed what I said about the fans that he hated for them that they didn't play. for a guy who's he hadn't always really acted like this tournament mattered. He didn't do that tonight, and I give him a lot of credit for that because that fans didn't want to hear that. Right, and so I give him credit for saying because he's right. This is a big deal to people, but you know they they've lost three straight games in the SEC tournament for the first time in the history of the school. Oh. First time in the history of the school they've lost three straight games in the SEC tournament. Uh, only the second time in the history of the school that they've gone five years without making the finals of the SEC tournament. And the last time it was 1929 to 1933. <laughs> so, with all that, Ryan, what do you think? Well, you, you hit on, I think, on the main points. Texas A&M is just it, – it, they're, they're a bad matchup for Kentucky. they physical – and they had a guard that could get to the rim. They have two guards that get to the rim any time they want. Any time. Any time. We could not stop the drive for Relford, Redford, or uh, Wade, Taylor. Wade Taylor. Either one of them. The big guys push us around, bully us around. They did it in January. They did it again this time. But you said it, man. You've got a major – Home court advantage. You're not going to get a better home court advantage than this. No. This is like, for if you've never been here, this is like Allen Fieldhouse, Kansas loud. Yes. You cannot get a better home court advantage than they have here. Nope. And you haven't been able to take advantage of it here two years in a row on your first game of the tournament. It's, it's, it, it's, in, it's, it's becoming embarrassing. When you said we're 13th out of 14 SEC teams in our tournament record here, that's that's a, that's embarrassing, man. Embarrassing when we have the best home court advantage by far. I mean, by far. There are so many Kentucky. That fans was a here. home game How for many, Kentucky. They did a thing at the end where they played the swag surfing song, and they were winning by like. 10, so they were swag surfing and our fans weren't. And it just occurred to me how few people they had. Yeah, I mean, they had like a sex, uh, you know. 12 rows behind the bench. Yep, and, and that about was, 12 rows behind you. And that, that was, was about, about it. it. Yep. I mean, there was like, you know, I mean, so look. You know what? You know, I, just, uh, go ahead. Those people behind you may have been Alabama fans, now that I think about it. Well, they, yeah, there weren't many A&M fans. So, you know, look, I'm not – this isn't just me being, oh, Matt's – too optimistic or too pessimistic. I still think if they got a certain draw in the tournament, they could go to the Final Four because there are teams that cannot play with us. But I thought when we beat Tennessee and when we beat Mississippi State on the road, I kind of thought now we have a recipe to beat the teams we don't match up well with. Yeah. Because I know we can beat the teams we do match up well with. And I said on the pregame show, I was more worried about this game than the other ones because of that matchup. But now to not only lose, but kind of get our our tail kicked. Got manhandled, man. If we see one of those teams in the tournament, and there aren't many of them, but if we do. We'll have trouble. It's hard to feel confident. I think you also saw tonight how important Reeves is to the offensive part of this. He was in foul trouble. And because he's in foul trouble, he wasn't in long enough to get a rhythm. And we, when he is not in, we struggle to get guys open. In the first half, Shepard was able to do it by himself. Shepard kept us in the game in the first half. Yeah. And then in the second half, though, you saw we were when he's not in, we really struggle to get guys open for shots. And you end up with Dillingham kind of having to do as much as he can do. And he went on a run where he scored like seven points in a minute. But we just didn't have enough with anybody else. With all that said, we gave up 97. And so yes. winning when you give up 97 is going to be pretty hard. And didn't it feel like 197? It felt like they scored every single yep, time. Yep, it did. <laughs> it felt like they hit every shot. And if it wasn't a three-pointer, it was a straight-line drive to the basket. It felt like they scored every Time down the floor. If they had missed a bunch of free throws, they would have had over a hundred. Oh yeah, early. They missed a bunch of free throws. Yeah, and you know, 
I do think there was a there were some touch fouls at, at the end. Like I think we got the negative end of the officiating, but it's not why we lost. No, no, it's not why we lost. Nope, we lost because they beat us. They man, they man and they manhandled us from the start to the finish. We led one nothing and never led again. And it's probably too late at this point to change the lineup. But I, if we don't win it this year, I mean, I don't mean win the whole thing, but if we don't get to the Elite Eight or the Final Four, there's, there's going to be a part of me that's going to look back and go, why did we do it like this? Why do we need to make it harder than it has to be? I don't know. You know, why do we got to be down 8-1 to one every game? <laughs> That's why that race to 10 on DraftKings, I've, that's the only one bet I win every year, every game. Now, you brought up that point about Reeves sitting out in foul trouble. So that meant that meant their best defender switched. Reeves is on the bench. Exactly. Started guarding Reed, exactly. and that bothered and Reed. That bothered him. Yeah. And Reeves, I thought uh, I thought that third foul on Reeves, the first one in the second half, was a bad call, and it made a big difference though because it takes him out. And you know, I thought Cal left him on the bench a little too long when he got his fourth. But regardless of all that, when he's not in, even if he's, it's just the threat of him. Yes changes everything for everybody yep. else. Yep. And it, and teams have a decision to make with their guards. They're going to put one of their best ones on Antonio. Yes. So then they have to pick their poison. Yeah. Am I going to make Reed Shepard beat me or am I going to make Rob Dillingham beat me? And if you go back and look at when Reed had his run, it was when Reeves was in before he got his second foul. Yep. And then when you go back and you look when Dillingham had his run, it was when Reeves was in after they put him back in after his fourth yeah. so you He makes a big difference, and and I, and I, then some of the guys just look scared, man. I I hate it, but they look like they, they look like for the first time this year, they look like they had the weight of the world on them. Yeah. You remember that you, you leaned over, you were sitting right behind me, and you said, hey, this is a big possession. It was a six-point game. Yep. Six-point game with – Four minutes to go, it was before something the, like that. Yeah, and I said, if minutes. you can get a stop right here, and they got an and one. Yeah, and instead of getting a stop, they gave up a three-point play. Yeah, got an and one. And so now it goes up to nine. Yeah. Whereas if, if, we, if we stop them, them, come down, you know, we can hit a three on each possession. It's yes. a three-point game. Yeah. That, by the way, they couldn't get over, like, the five-point hump. It was five-point game, like, uh-huh. the whole time. All right, eight five nine two eight zero twenty two eighty seven. I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm bummed. I'll be honest with you, I'm bummed. I love, I love this tournament. I love coming down here. I love seeing the faces. You know, I love that show we do today. I love, I love this thing, and I hate what it's been like these last few years. I hate looking at all those people when it's over and how dis. Because when we go play next week or even the week after, we won't have as many fans there as we had here. Never. No. This is a. This is Rupp Arena right here. Maybe at the Final Four you get that many. But these first two, like, we will not have as many people no. as we're here. And they're loud. And they're, and it, it stinks. All right, 859-280-2287. Billy will open the lines. We will take a break and come back. This is the uh, Local Toy 